the hover vehicles are the Freedom Trade Builders. Uh, in this case, they're actually, there's no works in progress here. There may be modifications that may eventually come to some of these. Uh, there will be one more hover vehicle not shown here. Uh, that's because I've been uh, reading about uh, the radar working for the hover vehicles and being a very useful item in the game. And so you will eventually see another hover vehicle uh, that uh, will have a radar on them, on it. But for the moment, this is the hover vehicles of the Freedom Trade Builders. They are all on the workshop, but I'm just going to give a quick little overview here. Um, let's start with, uh, let's see, the first one I built of these, I believe, would be the Kiwi. Originally I called it the Mole, and it ha used to have a significantly different look to it. It's gone through several iterations, uh, even before it made it to the workshop. Uh, I ended up renaming it uh, to the Kiwi to make it more consistent with Freedom Trade Builders. And uh, so, but uh, there are some reasonings behind my miner here. In addition to having these six drills, which is kind of standard for, you know, uh, a lot of the miners to try to get, uh, you know, get your materials as fast as possible. Uh, I believe I went, uh, um, and I've tested it. Well, I know I've tested this out several times, but let me show you here the interior of this stuff. This is actually a design choice uh, to make this cabin like this, because uh, for whatever reason, when I was first uh, working with the HV miner in Alpha Six and developing and building this, it seemed like I would always press the F key to exit the cockpit at the most inopportune times. Uh, I would, uh, and my hover vehicle would be pointed up in the air, uh, you know, as I'm drilling it down there, I'd end up I'm drilling at one position where I've got it pointed up for some reason, and I pop out of the cockpit, I fall off the hover vehicle, I'm down on the ground, I've got to get it clear up to the top now to get to the back to the cockpit. Um, I, you know, it would be nearly, uh, it was one of those things where getting back to my hover vehicle was almost always a challenge to get back into it. So I built this that as long as they uh, don't mess things up too much for exiting the cockpit and I've got that door closed in the back there, there's enough room, I pop out of my, uh, I accidentally pop out of the uh, seat and I'm still in the hover vehicle. I might be sitting at the uh, other end being grateful I closed the door, um, but at least I'm still in there, able to turn around, find my uh, orientation click on the cockpit and get back to uh, my mining uh, or my tunneling so this uh, it's just more built around uh, the mistakes I made uh, and it's been quite functional I've, uh, I like it uh, very much uh, the stuff being that closed in cockpit I've been able to bring it in my game I start collecting the materials quicker quicker once I've got a capital vessel to carry this thing uh, take it up to the moon, do mining on the moon, you know, clear out resources there, take it to other planets. Uh, I'm not stressing over, you know, as long as I keep the O2 tanks on that thing full, I'm not stressed in the uh, canopy in peace, in one piece. Um, so I, I don't have to worry about, is it too cold out there, too hot, uh, that sort of stuff. I just simply uh, go about my business mining out the deposits. So I really liked my uh, Kiwi. So, oh, another point on the Kiwi. In the earlier uh, builds of this, it used to be a very stable, the hover uh, engines were a little further apart, and it was a very stable build. Uh, in the process of, uh, you know, I know some people will they'll do tricks where they'll have hover engines uh, uh, shut off uh, the stuff so they can you know tip the front forward, things like that. This doesn't have any of that. I didn't know about those tricks at the time I built this. Um, so what I ended up doing is, as I learned more about uh, mining, I ended up bringing the hover engines closer together. But that also has some advantages as I'm down there to reorient uh, the vessel, because when it is really stable, one of the things I found when I had a really stable build is that if, uh, as I'm drilling down there, and I end up, uh, you know, slightly on the side, I end up more and more on the side. But since the uh, stability of the vessel would go to the contours of the terrain, 
the more my train was uh, angled at some other angle, I would be stuck at that angles for trying to do my mining, really struggling to get back to something uh, more, uh, more what I needed or wanted. Whereas the uh, you know a balance of st uh, a certain degree of instability in this case was advantageous for uh, when I need to redirect where I am mining. Okay, this is the rail number 85, made for a uh, challenge on uh, the forums, uh, the official forums. Uh, so it's not the Steam forums, the official forums of the game uh, for Imperium, uh, Imperium Galactic Survival. And uh, I actually did a racer for each one of the collections. I ended up going with this one because I liked one. Uh, the way I liked the way it looked. I had a, I was kind of debating between this one and one other uh, stuff. One of the things I did on this, uh, these are glass. So if we had this thing turned on, just go ahead and turn this on. Uh, you can actually see the thrusters through there. There, that is a glass. I kind of like the effect it went for. Uh, again, I put uh, here some glass on the spoiler. I personally, I really like the effect. It's not the uh, biggest entry in the challenge. May not be the best performance, but it has a really good uh, yaw rate. Uh, very, uh, very good for uh, 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 for the racers I built and stuff. Uh, I think the only one that really, uh, well, uh, there's a, uh, I did a, most of them have a decent yaw rate. There were a couple that didn't come quite so close. But yeah, I uh, really enjoyed that uh, vessel. Now there's a reason I had left this one up, up uh, here and hovering. This, uh, the steamer duck, is my first interpretation of a point defense vessel. I decided I wanted this vehicle uh, to also have a little bit of storage uh, uh, on the other side there's a refrigerator the idea being that I could then uh, bring this uh, to uh, some of the wrecks and then have it uh, you know basically defend me as I'm using a multi-tool uh, pulling uh, blocks off of the uh, point of interest uh, so this would uh, give me a defense against uh, drones or predators so I didn't have to worry about it much myself. I just, you know, day and night, just pull blocks off that point of interest. Uh, the the reason I have it hovering here is because it is actually one uh, hover engine right underneath that uh, docking pad or landing pad. One underneath that one and one underneath that one. There is only three hover engines on this thing. It is actually a trike. Despite its uh, looks to be a quad, there is only three hover engines on this thing. It is a trike. So I later uh, built a trike as part of one of my other collections, um, inspired completely by this thing. But the Steamer Duck is my first point defense uh, vessel. It is designed so that uh, I could land it and turn off the uh, maneuver so that the engines and the RCS are turned off to conserve fuel and now to operate longer as a point defense uh, system. You know, also saving fuel so the refrigerator doesn't go, you know, shut off as uh, keep my food good. This here is the Chick. The Freedom Transport Builders is about transporting cargo. Uh, th that's what I decided would be the theme of this collection. They might have some point defense. We have a racing vehicle. Uh, a mining vehicle and the uh, cassowary there. Sparrow is actually from the uh, small vessels. That's just about how I got over here. Uh, I didn't drive a hover vessel all the way over here. I was just trying to find a place to uh, put these on display. So the chick here is basically a cargo pallet. It is designed to fit in two blocks of the large uh, uh, blocks for bases or capital vessels so it is the uh, within the size of one large scale large cargo box in this case though it has several large cargo boxes itself so until they uh, change the scales of what the uh, the small scale scale uh, large cargo box can carry and the large scale large cargo box can carry 
this thing uh, will, uh, at the moment, take up the same space as a large cargo box, just a tad under it, um, and hold significantly more. So this is basically just a mobile cargo pallet. Uh, then over here we have the cassowary. Now when I had uh, come up with the ideas for some point defense uh, vessels, we have the steamer duck. Uh, that one I had designed uh, to be my first point defense. Well, at the time I wondered, uh, the steamer duck, nice point defense. What if I tried to fit as many turrets as I could into a small space? So in this case, what I'm doing is doing some of the tur turrets vertically, calling it the cassowary. And the next question I had, after I put uh, eight turrets on this thing, I was like, what really can it do? So I was like, well, what if I give it some Gatling guns, and this is how I do uh, do load up the concept before I built it. So when I built it, I uh, built it based off of that con concept. I put six Gatling guns on it, give it this uh, similar to the Kiwi and enclosed uh, canopy. Uh, we have a few cargo bots is here for uh, loot, our fridge, stuff. Like the other point defense, it is designed so that you can shut off the maneuver and have it operate for a longer time just sitting there. Uh, acting as your as a point defense, it's supposed to be. Uh, it was originally conceived as an enhanced point defense, maximizing turrets and just a small little uh, inexpensive, you know, at least uh, comparatively inexpensive uh, vessel. But then at the time when I was taking it against point of interest, just to see how much it could do, I was taking on pretty much every point of interest I could find. Now that they've changed some of the uh, scale of the damage and uh, hit points of the turrets, this thing uh, struggles against uh, more advanced, uh, more well-defended uh, points of interest. But at least initially, it was very good. Uh, I was taking against uh, even fortresses, uh, well exceeding what I was expecting. I think it would do good again, if only it uh, the game gave us a little more control on those turrets I find that unfortunately a lot of the time these turrets aren't actually helping me take care of the turrets on the base but rather that they are blasting at the walls trying to get at uh, aliens or perhaps uh, sentry guns inside I'm guessing mostly aliens uh, that are patrolling inside the uh, base usually since they're inside the base they're not really a threat to me it's the turrets on the outside that are a threat, but these things are uh, and basically wasting their ammo, trying to punch through the walls of the base to get to tar uh, threats, get to future threats that are not currently a danger to my uh, the task at hand. So that's one of my little frustrations. You know, the I end up uh, when they rebalance the damages and uh, uh, values and stuff. Well, then I'm, I have a tour that's uh, significantly tougher, and I'm still really trying to punch it with the six Gatling guns. Uh, and, uh, you know, so it, it, was, uh, it was brutal. Uh, so I have, uh, you know, it doesn't do, you know, for, you know, even with the current changes, it might do all right against a um, light point of interest, but uh, anything uh, of any significant value it doesn't do as well anymore. Uh, there is the possibility I may change it in the future just to keep this as the point of interest assault uh, hover vehicle for uh, Freedom Trade Builders, uh, in which case I would probably, uh, my thought is, uh, uh, add some glass uh, in the front here uh, to thicken that up there, uh, a little more protection, buy you a little more time. That seems to be the weakest point on this thing at the moment. Uh, and you know, that would require me to move, move the uh, seat back a bit and if I'm doing that I may be extending this back just a little bit more just so I still have that nice space inside there so when I uh, get out of the uh, seat I'm still inside the vessel. Okay well that is the hover vehicles of the Freedom Trade Builders and nice little short little tour of that. Have a good day.